Hello everyone, my name is Ong Wing Kei. My nickname is Travis and my name is B0419807. Nice to meet y'all. Hi everyone, my name is Sheka. My name number is B0419802. And hello everyone, my name is Ahmad Akman, name B0418-8901. So today let's conduct a session of podcast about the topic of heresis, properalis, ketosis, and grassatani. Can I ask you a question, Sheka? Yeah, what's up, Travis? You see, I actually help out in a cattle farm near my house during my free time, and I came across this cow that is unwell. It has no appetite to eat, and the limbs were so stiff, it was also bloated and almost unconscious. When I asked the farmer there, he said the cow is suffering from properaris. Do you know what is properaris, Sheka? Oh, I think I remember our lecturer talking about this topic a few weeks ago. Leh. I think the full name of properaris is paresis properaris. And it's actually properly known as milk fever. Oh, milk fever. Sound really fam- sound, sounds very familiar, but I don't really remember what is it. Leh. Okay, let me explain. I know, I think I remember well. I remember this lecture pretty well because it's very interesting though, this topic. Let me explain. Milk fever is a condition caused by a low blood calcium level, also known as hypocalcemia in cows. During the final months of pregnancy and early lactation, there is a considerable drain on cow's blood calcium level to supply the developing calf and also to build milk for lactation. If the drain occurs too quickly, the amount of calcium in the body may drop below optimal level, resulting in milk fever. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. But which cattle is more more likely to be affected? Um, It is usually the older ones and the high producing cows in uh, in good body condition score and sometimes shortly before or even after calving and occasionally it can occur to also a few weeks after calving when the cows are in extra states or when they are stressed. Oh, okay, okay. Now my memories is resurfacing again. The symptom to this disease has three stages, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Shika. Yes, you are right, Travis. I remember quite well there are three stages to look for cattle swimming fever. Uh, stage one is when the cow may appear excited with stiffening of the muscles and trembling, uh, which this can may go unnoticed. And the cows can be reluctant to move, to eat, there's no appetite, and their hind legs will be stiff, and they may stagger sometimes. That's stage one. So when it comes to stage two is when the cow will be found lying and sitting, reluctant to get up, and they have a kink in the neck or in the folded part of the flank. And also they have very low temperature, they are dull and they are cold to the touch. They have um, breathe, they breathe heavily and sometimes with a high heart rate. That is stage two. So the final stage is stage three, is when the cows are unresponsive, they are almost unconscious, they're almost coma, and then the animal, the cow will always sit there on the sides with the legs stretched out. They bloat often and also regurgitate often. And when it comes to this stage, if it's not treated, they can actually die. Oh, now it makes sense, Sheka. No wonder the cow I saw in the farm was unwell. It had almost all the symptoms you just explained just now. I feel really bad for the cow because it is really suffering and restless. Is there any way to treat the cow? Yes, thankfully there is a cure to milk fever. But to begin, in treatment, you have to make sure that the animal is sitting up upright to reduce the danger of choking. And animals with milk fever need an injection of calcium. So this injection is called Calcigo Plus. In Calcigo Plus injection, there is calcium borogluconate, magnesium, phosphorus, and glucose. So this injection must be injected as early as possible. And it is usually given under the skin behind the shoulder. Um, generally, one bag is enough. However, if it's a larger animal or more severely affected, maybe we we'll require two bags. And uh, to inject it, you've got to warm the solution first and slightly rub the area to spread the fluid uh, and to avoid any problems such as swelling and infection. Cows that are staggering or like unable to sit up properly, they will be able to recover in one to two hours. Uh, however, if the animal is the cow, like, is not still uh, getting up in two hours, 
she may require an IV injection instead, intravenous injection of the same calcium injection. And the calf should be removed from the mother, affected calves, uh, and only be partially milked for the next 48 hours prior, uh, uh, post injection to help prevent any relapse again. Oh, wow. I'm so pleased to hear this. I'll definitely bring this up to the farmer of the farm so that he can start to begin the treatment as soon as possible on the cow. Yeah, you should pity the cow. Leh. Is there only one cow affected with milk fever symptoms there? Yeah, for what I know so far, only one is affected, but I will make sure to run through the farm and double check on the other cow uh, with the milk fever. But Shika, as the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. Is there other any ways to prevent the milk fever from occurring? Yes, there is Travis to prevent this from occurring at all. Lah. You know, of course, prevention is better than uh, cure. So first of all, you got to manage uh, the diet uh, of the high producing cows. And managing this diet can be a valuable aid in preventing milk fever. Cows should be kept on a low calcium diet while they are dry when they are not lactating. By doing this, this body is stimulated to keep the blood calcium levels normal by mobilizing the body's stores of calcium from bones. When the demand of calcium increases at calving, calcium then can be rapidly drawn from the bone rather than the feet. Therefore, it can prevent milk fever. Changing the cow's diet during the transition period, which is like four weeks before or after calving, can also help to reduce the occurrence of milk fever and other metabolic diseases lah, by increasing your calcium intake in the feed of the cow. Amazing that you know so much about this disease, Sheka. I'm glad that I brought this topic to you. Thank you so much. No problem, Travis. I'm glad that I could be of help. By the way, right, recently, I've been helping my uncle in his very own cattle farm. Lah. I've come across uh, uh, ketosis on my uncle's farm, one of the cows, few cows actually. Do you know anything about it? Uh? Mm, I've actually done a presentation about ketoketosis the previous semester. So ketosis is a metabolic disease that occurs when the cow is in severe state of negative energy balance. In early lactation, all cows are in a state of negative energy balance. However, the magnitude of this can vary during severe negative uh, energy balance, the cow mobilizes excessive amount of body fat but cannot convert this energy through the usual pathway. Instead, ketone bodies such as beta-hydroxybutyrate are produced. In small amount, the cow can use uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate as an alternative energy source. However, when ketone production is too high, the cow cannot use all ketone bodies for energy and beta-hydroxybutyrate concentration increase in the blood. When this occurs, the cow may suffer from ketosis. Mm. I heard there are three different types of ketosis. Can you remind me again? What are they? Yeah, sure. Type 1 ketosis is when a sudden drop in energy intake leads to ketosis. This can be due to the underfeeding or adverse weather events such as snowstorms or floods that prevent the cow from eating sufficient amount of dry matter. Type 2 ketosis is occurring during post-calving. Cows that are too fat at calving, such as BCS more than 5, are particularly at risk. For example, cows that are calf, uh, that calf at BCS 6 are twice as likely to be suffer from ketosis than cows that are calf at BCS 5.5. As for cows that are have been overfed pre-calving are also at risk of the type 2 ketosis. Last but not least, the type 3 ketosis is silage ketosis that is due to the cow ingesting poor quality of silage. The silage undergoes a secondary fermentation and when ingested will increase the risk of ketosis. Whoa, this is very interesting though to learn about actually. From what I've learned, the clinical signs also have two types as well, can? Yeah, that's right. There are actually a wasting form and also nervous form of ketosis signs. Signs of wasting form include lethargy, such as head downs, lack of energy, decreased dry matter intake, decreased milk production, and often a sweet smell on the breath uh, due to the acetone. The sign of uh, the second form, which is nervous form, includes excitable, uh, uncoordinated and can become aggressive, strange behavior such as eating soy, licking fence posts and gates, walking in circle, or standing with heads raised up and pushed into the corner, etc. 
Yep, yep, yeah. That is what I can recall as well, actually, from the your presentation that time. One of the cattle in my uncle's farm, though, is having ketosis, uh, clinical symptoms, and is not able to stand at all. How should I provide care for that cattle, though? Do you have any idea? Mm, based on my professional opinion, I think you can provide it with shelter, shelf bedding, and continued nursing, including regular roaring from side to side to avoid sores. Use hip lifters or similar lifting device to assist the affected cow to her feet for some time. Hip clamps can be used only to help the cow stand, but not to keep her standing. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, though, Travis. It's been very informative about ketosis. I will sure bring this up to my uncle for that uh, poor cow, poor the cow. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I hope your cow is uh, will be recovered soon. Uh, hey, Amma, have you ever heard of uh, grass tetani? From what I know, grass tetani is a highly fertile disease associated with low level of magnesium in the blood. Grass tetani can affect all class of cattle, but older cows with calves at food during winter and spring are most at risk. Very thin and overly fat animals are also more sus susceptible as, as are Angus cattle and their crosses. Hmm, it sounds very dangerous to the cattle. I'm kind of concerned about this disease. Do you know what are the contributing causes? Um, as far as I know, is the magnesium levels are lower in cool season grasses and cereals than in legumes or wheat. Levels are low in grasses grown on leach acid sandy soils. Levels are low when potash and nitrogen fertilizers are used and growth is vigorous. High moist moisture content in grass causing rapid gut transit and low uptake. Reduced absorption of magnesium resulting from high rumen potassium and nitrogen and low rumen sodium, low energy intake, fasting or sudden change in feed. Also, bad weather, especially winter storms, stress such as transport or yarding, low rush intake, low intake of phosphorus as well as low intake of, of salt are all possible contributing factors of grass tetany. Wow, there's a lot to be worried about. Yeah, we got to take a lot of extra precaution though. But Alma, what signs do we look out for cattle with grass tetany though? Yes, they, they are signs that we can be alert of. Like animals suffering from grass tetany are often found dead. There may be marks on the ground beside the animal indicating they were leg like paddling before death. They like lying on their side with stuff with stiff outstretched legs that thrash backwards and forwards. And the early signs include some excit excitability with muscle twitching and exaggerated awareness and a stiff gait. Animals may appear aggressive and may progress through galloping, bellowing, and then staggering. In less of our cases, the only signs may be a change in the character of the animal and difficulty in handling. Mm, okay, okay. Understandable. Understandable. Oh gosh, this disease is dangerous and fatal. Please tell me there is a cure to this Akma. Yes, fortunately there is. Blood magnesium levels must be restored. Veterinary administration of an intravenous calcium and magnesium solution produce best results. However, in acute case where time is critical, pro producers can inject a calcium and magnesium solution under the skin. Producers should also provide oral sources of magnesium to affect hearts to prevent relapse. These include magnesium oxide powder for dusting onto feet or pasture, magnesium leak blocks, slow release capsules, magnesium sulfate, or soluble magnesium chloride added to hay or, or silage, and adding magnesium to concentrate or pellets. These products are available from your veterinarian, feed supplier, or rural supplies company. Amazing. Thank you, Akmal. Thank you so much for the discussion today. Today's podcast session is really fun and informative through an interactive way. Let's end our session by saying goodbye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.